Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations. Today we'll be taking a look at HPE's four socket ProLiant DL580 Gen 10 server. There are two 500 series systems, the DL560, which is a 2DU chassis, and the DL580, which is a 4U chassis, but both support four Intel Xeon scalable processors. They're both also regarded as the world's most secure industry standard servers. The DL580 is designed to address business critical workloads, virtualization, graphics intensive, and general business processing, and provides the performance to excel in these roles. Let's take a look at the hardware. The 4U chassis can support two or four Intel Xeon scalable processors, six terabytes of memory, and up to 48 storage devices, including 20 NVMe drives. This is a high density server that offers scalable enterprise performance. With its large memory footprint, it's definitely what you want for your mission critical workloads for in-memory database applications like SAP HANA. There's also support for NVMe DIMMs and NVMe storage devices for enhanced reliability. All that upfront storage adds up to 4.8 times more drives than the Gen 9 version. Not only that, but this system will also support up to four graphics accelerators. The front of the system is divided into six separate sections, each of which can host up to eight 2.5 inch drives for a total of 48 2.5 inch drives if all bays are loaded with storage devices. Compare that to only 10 drives on the Gen 9 DL580. With support for up to 734 terabytes, the DL580 Gen 10 is also ideal for storage intensive applications. Supported drive options include SATA, SAS, and NVMe devices. Up to 10 SATA drives can be rated using the embedded software RAID controller. Optional HPE Smart Array controllers can be installed to support additional storage devices. The NVMe drive trays feature a second LED that SAS and SATA drive trays don't have to tell you whether the drive can be removed safely without incurring data loss. NVMe drives can only be loaded in storage boxes one through three for a maximum of 20 NVMe drives supported. The remaining drive bays in those three boxes can be outfitted with SAS or SATA drives. A universal media bay is only supported in box four and provides other options, including an optical drive, ports for a crash cart, and two drive bays. Obviously, if you have the whole front of the system loaded with drives, tragically, there won't be room for the universal media bay. Are you interested in the HPE ProLiant DL580 Gen 10? For a limited time, you can save up to $500 off the price of a system listed at $5,000 or more. That's right, just click that link to see pricing, and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. IT Creations also carries all the parts and components to custom configure your system and send it out for next day delivery. Sounds good. The control panel on the front of the system has LED lights to provide system power, health, and NIC status, plus a UID LED. For even more information on the system health, you can refer to the system's InSight display. This optional press and release panel is integrated with the control panel. It shows a series of LEDs that provide status information on the temperature, CPUs, power supplies, memory modules, PCIe risers, and fans. The new and improved integrated lights out ILO 5.0 module features a redesigned HPE chip and updated firmware to provide embedded management and enhanced security on the DL580 Gen 10. For managing multiple generations of HPE servers, HPE OneView helps administrators quickly allocate resources where they are needed most. OneView is part of HPE's composable strategy I talked about in our review of the HPE Synergy 12000 frame review. OneView allows the reconfiguration of server assets to deliver resources where they are needed most, quickly. There are several other security features to protect your data, and I could talk about those, but let's see more hardware. An impressive set of top-of-the-line gold and platinum processors are supported on this system. However, if you want the full memory count of up to six terabytes in a four processor configuration, you will need Xeon scalable processors with the M suffix. Only those processors with an M after the model number will support up to 1.5 terabytes each. Without the M, you'll only get support for 768 gigabytes of memory per processor or half of the maximum memory count of six terabytes with four processors. One more thing to consider is how many processors you ultimately want to install. Because some of the gold processors only have two UltraPath interconnects or UPI channels that connect the processors. With two interconnects per processor, you'll have a similar ring configuration like that on the Xeon E5 2600 processors with only two quick path interconnects. With three UltraPath interconnects in a four processor configuration, you get the ring with a cross in the middle so all processors communicate with each other, increasing inner CPU communications compared to the previous generation processors. An upper CPU mezzanine board kit will let you add two additional processors, 24 memory modules, and provides a connection to attach a four port NVMe mezzanine card. The CPU mezzanine connects to the motherboard by the upper processor mezzanine connections. Mezzanine connections on the risers plug into the CPU mezzanine board from the top. The system came with a four port, one gigabit ethernet daughter card, although there are more options for increased bandwidth. Registered, load reduced, and NVMe memory modules are supported on the system in different capacities. 
LR DIMMs provide the highest capacity at 6 terabytes in a quad processor arrangement, or half that with two processors. Registered DIMMs will support about half that capacity at 3 terabytes with four CPUs, and with NVMe DIMM modules, even less. Load reduced DIMMs cannot be mixed with registered DIMMs, but you are required to mix at least one registered DIMM with NVMe DIMMs, as they are basically registered DIMMs too. In fact, you can mix up to 24 NV DIMMs with a maximum of 6 NV DIMMs per processor. Three supported risers provide up to 16 PCI 3.0 expansion slots and include a primary, secondary, and tertiary riser. And by the way, if you order the second riser separately, it comes with a tertiary riser, which cannot be ordered separately. Depending on your, what your goals are for the system, there are several risers to choose from. If you plan on installing NVMe drives, you will be needing specific risers for the job. Internal storage controllers and SAS expander cards can only be installed in the primary and tertiary risers. For graphics intensive applications, you can load up to four graphics cards. Same for computational accelerators, which offer improved performance when crunching numbers for computationally intensive applications and high performance computing. If you upgrade after purchase, you'll need a GPU bracket and the associated cables. This specific platform has the SmartArray P408iP SR Gen 10 controller, which offers performance RAID capabilities. It supports up to 28 SAS drives and transfers data at 12 gigabits per second, plus two gigabits of flashback write cache. To take advantage of that flashback write cache, you will need an HPE SmartArray battery, sold separately. The HPE ProLiant DL580 Gen 10 is your mission critical go-to system supporting up to four processors, six terabytes of memory, and up to 734 terabytes of storage in a 4U chassis. It's also a shoe-in for memory-intensive applications like SAP HANA, plus software-defined storage applications to increase agility. Although if you don't need all that storage, you can always go with the DL560, featuring a 2U form factor with much less storage but still delivers the same compute and memory credentials. We'll be taking a look at that one in the next few weeks. In the meantime, if you have any questions on this platform or any other, just post them in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.